Today I'm in a county that's home to a stretch of moorland that gave rise to a famous local song where dogs play football and sheep fly backwards. Where are we? Well, join me in just a few moments and I'll tell you. On today's show, I'll be helping a couple from Northern Ireland find their forever home over the water in England. And early on, we hit a real high note at one of our properties. I said to you this morning, you're the merry go man. I think maybe this is <laughs> your own song today, that's all I can say. Then the mystery house reduces them to tears. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> Do you want to do this? <laughs> Well, today I'm in West Yorkshire, and this is Ilkley Moor, a place famous, of course, for the song on Ilkley Moor Bar Tat, a tune now synonymous with the West Yorkshire dialect. But there's a lot more to it than just a jovial tale warning of the dangers of coming up here courting without a hat on. In these parts, it's a serious matter. One local MP proposed a motion in the House of Commons trying to keep the song alive. Now, whether you know the words or not, it is just one part of the area's rich heritage and culture that makes this part of Yorkshire well worth a visit. Now, on paper, house hunting here in West Yorkshire does make for some pretty interesting reading. Your average detached will set you back around about £206,000. And to put that in context, that's the same price as you would have paid back in 2004. But don't be fooled. The amount of urban sprawl around here tends to cheat house prices down a bit, get out into the countryside, and they can rise around Ilkley by as much as 20%. But as you might expect, in a county with such historic pedigree, there are some wonderful architectural styles and examples on offer. There's a choice of affordable period properties here, thanks to an array of former workers' cottages. You'll find cosy two-bed terraces in most villages in the county, with prices starting at around £100,000. If your budget can stretch to at least £450,000, you could purchase a Georgian detached house in traditional local stone. Many of these properties have been internally updated, creating a modern home with a wealth of character. And if you really want to lord it up, then keep your eyes open for one of the rare ex-mill owners' mansions. Prices can start at around £800,000 and spiral upwards from there. So as you can see, some wonderful architectural examples on offer to suit every taste and every budget. Let's just hope we can find something to fit today's buyers. Meet 60-somethings Bert and Maggie from Bangor, Northern Ireland, who've been married for almost 46 years. I would describe Maggie as bright, articulate and lovely. And I would describe Bert as uh, good fun, steady and... <laughs> now retired from the Irish Guards, Bert's distinguished military career saw him reaching the rank of Major and being awarded an MBE. But now he and Maggie are planning to escape from their modern two-bedroom house to England in order to be closer to their four children and six grandchildren, the majority of whom live in Yorkshire. What we're most excited about regard in regards uh, moving is obviously to be with the children and the grandchildren. But also, um, I would say I feel energised by change. And so the fact that this is going to be changing to a new place, a new environment, uh, that is exciting. However, the move has been delayed by illness, with Bert being diagnosed with cancer several years ago. When I was first diagnosed, I was very lucky because this was picked up very early. Well, now is the perfect time to move because I'm in between uh, transplants. They will give me a stem cell transplant and then uh, down the line I will have another uh, stem cell transplant. My cancer cannot be cured, but it can be treated. Despite his illness, Bert is tackling life head on. In fact, he's planned a fundraising walk for his old regiment. At the moment, I'm in training uh, to get myself fit enough to walk from Dublin to Belfast. This is a distance of 128 miles, and we're doing this uh, for the wounded soldiers from their service in Afghanistan. And once the walk is over, Bert will be able to take life a little easier, allowing him and Maggie the chance to indulge some of their passions. I really enjoy writing. Uh, I write prose and poetry. And I've had a poem published um, in an anthology, and that's something I would like to continue when I get to Yorkshire. I love music of 
any description. I would listen to any sort of music. And I have been involved in playing in a folk group. And then I suddenly thought, uh, why don't I change direction here? So I am attending lessons at the moment, finding it quite difficult, I might add, uh, to become a heavy metal rock star. <laughs> Well, a rock star budget would be nice, but our buyers have a bit less to play with. The budget for our move is £250,000. Bert and Maggie have set their hearts on living within an hour's radius of their daughter's home, which is around 15 miles north of Halifax. I caught up with them in the West Yorkshire countryside to find out a bit more about their future plans. Maggie, Bert, lovely to see you here in Yorkshire. Is it nice to be here at long last? Yes, absolutely. Mm. Now, of course, you're now still in Northern Ireland. So yes. the joy at the moment is that we've got you here for a few days to really concentrate our search and to really get to the bottom of what it is you're after. Maggie, just describe your ideal property for us at the moment. The ideal property would be, well, preferably a detached house with um, two or three bedrooms, uh, lots of light and space, um, garden, which would give us a degree of privacy. And Bert, did you get any say in this at all? I'm a man, Jules. No. <laughs> <laughs> to be quite honest. What have you got to spend, Bert? Uh, 250,000 uh, would be our top, top line, Jules, uh, really. Now, your house in Northern Ireland has suffered some drop in its expected value, hasn't it? Yes, we're now sort of tied to the budget that, that, that we're, we're in, but we're hoping that you're the miracle man. <laughs> work this out for us. It always worries me when people say that. <laughs> I don't know, I'm fairly optimistic. Good, well, this is what we're hoping. You've come to the right place, you hope. Mm. <laughs> yes, you're, you're the miracle you. man. So <laughs> yeah, you've said that once too often, right? Come on, follow me. <laughs> So for their budget of £250,000, Bert and Maggie would like us to find them a light, bright home with three bedrooms, a spacious kitchen and a private garden. We've got three properties which I think they'll find hard to resist, but before I reveal the price of each, I'll ask them to take a guess at it. The final option is, as ever, our mystery house, and we're hoping it'll really put a spell on them. So time to hit the property trail. I imagine, Maggie, that you've moved around a fair bit during Bert's army career. We certainly did. We had about 23 houses in 19, 20 years. 23? Yes. So the chance to actually get properly settled at long last, knowing that your children are going to be just down the road, must be... Well, you just but you can't wait, can you? No, it's really just as something that we've, we've set this as a goal and by whatever method we want to achieve it, so we can't wait. We've made the journey seven miles west of Halifax to the beautiful village of Heptonstall. Historically a centre for hand-loom weaving, it was also the site of a battle in 1643 during the early part of the English Civil War. Now how about this? This is the centre of Heptonstall, the location mm. of property number one. What do you think, Bert? Well, this is absolutely stunning for mm -hmm. a start, Jules. I did ask you for miracles earlier on. <laughs> <laughs> You're not doing too bad today. Well, we haven't seen the house yet. Yeah, yeah, no, if you like what you amazing. see, all this, of course, would be on your doorstep. Mm. It's beautiful, this, and what you can see ahead of us there are the ruins of one church in the churchyard of another much grander affair. That's quite an unusual mm. little arrangement. So, as you can see, there's lots of history here, mm -hmm. but also some amenities. We've got a couple of pubs, one of which is closer yeah. than you might think. <laughs> right. And we've got a post office for you. Mm -hmm. And we're about, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes from where your daughters are. Sounds good. So, let's see yeah. what you think of it. Follow me. Thank you. I'm suddenly looking forward to seeing their reaction to our first property, which is an old weaver's cottage that was extended during Victorian times. So that's one pub, right. and here's the other one. Right. And the house I want you to look at is that one. It's in the middle. Oh, right. <laughs> what do you think? About the pub or the house? <laughs> About the house. We'll get to the pub later. <laughs> it's different, too. Uh, yes. Is it different to what you were imagining? 
I'm surprised and I'm not surprised if you understand <laughs> I mean from our conversation <laughs> earlier when Go on, uh, explain. Surprised that it is where it is. Not surprised be because I realise that it's not going to be a mansion. So mixed reactions so far, but I think the inside might prove to be a bit of a revelation. It is nice, wow. isn't it? Oh, this is. But it's lit up. Yes, hi. I'm very, very impressed. I must it's admit. Lovely. It's unusual it because it's got these nice high ceilings. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's, it's absolutely fine. Yes, it is. Isn't you know, it? I, I was expecting. I was expecting me standing talking to you like this. You might have to do that a bit later on. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm not going to kid you. <laughs> so our initial impressions then have perhaps put slightly different to what they were on the outside. Yes, yeah, certainly this is unexpected for what I saw on the outside. You seem a little more relieved. Yes. It really has a comfortable, welcoming feeling, hasn't it? It has. And there's a bonus underneath this room. Down a stone spiral staircase is a cellar currently being used as a sewing room. It could be just the space for the grandchildren to store their toys. Now we're going to take a look at the kitchen, which I think they'll find as welcoming as the sitting room. There we are, Maggie. Ah. Come on through. This is nice. This, of course, was the main bulk of the weaver's cottage right. back in yes. the day. Now it makes a fabulous kitchen. Mm. This is a proper wood burner. Oh, right. So it'll be really cosy. I'm thinking, Bert, I mean, picture the scene. You know, I'm just going to be you for a moment. <laughs> in your chair with a nice, large glass of wine. Rocking alone in an old rock. <laughs> 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 or a comfy armchair. <laughs> um, now, through that door there is the utility mm. room mm. and your main sort of family bathroom. That's where the mm. bath is. There's a shower over it. Yes. But there is another option upstairs. You could certainly feel it at home in here because there is a welcome to it and it is... It's just sort of embracing. I'm really pleased that Maggie's enjoying the homely feel to this charming cottage. And there's more than might be expected upstairs. On the first floor, there's a lovely south-facing room which could be used for guests or indeed for writing. And also on this floor is where they could be sleeping. So last but not least for you, what do you think? The master yes, bedroom. lovely. Yeah? Mm. It is. Again, a little That's bit neat. taller than you might have expected. The doors, yes. you know... Uh, or it might be a thing yeah, for you. So you. But once you're in, you're in. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the bonus is you've got a very nice shower en suite through there, mm. which for the size of property I think is pretty generous too. Yes. Yes. Very much so. It is these hidden things that you're not expecting because of the exterior. Yeah. The third bedroom on the top floor would definitely be the one that would suit their grandchildren, set up as it is with children in mind. But now we're heading to see what this property offers outside in the shared courtyard space. I mean, it's not every day that we get a village house like this with this sort of courtyard setup. But looking around me, I suspect it's always been like this. And I think it probably goes to the heart of why Hepton Stall is such a vibrant community still. So all of that on your doorstep. But well, let's have a think about the price of our first property then. Well, um, comparing this with the prices of houses in Northern Ireland is difficult. So I would think this is well under our budget. I'd mm -hmm. try for 195. Mm -hmm. I would be more in favour of saying it'd be 220,000 pounds. You're not far off, sir. Oh. 230 will get you this one. So we are comfortably <laughs> under the budget. Yes. Okay. Um, I can see, you know, there's an awful lot to consider, mm. not just with this property, but, but with the move in general. But I think you should go and have another look upstairs in that attic room. Yeah. Check it out. I'll, I'll catch up with you later. OK. Off you go. Okay. Uh, thanks very much. <laughs> At £230,000, this charming cottage is under budget, leaving the money in the bank. It has a large, cosy kitchen, a cellar, three bedrooms for the grandchildren to stay, and a shared and sociable courtyard garden. The first property took me by surprise when I was standing on the curbside. Uh, I wasn't expecting something to be just quite so close to the road. And then when I went inside, I was struck by the comfort and the, the warmth and the coziness of the room. Uh, all, in fact, all the rooms are much bigger than I expected them to be. The property would give us the living space that, that we would expect uh, to, to have to house the grandchildren and the family. Being overlooked is not a problem to myself. 
but it is, however, for Maggie. <laughs> because she likes her privacy when sun's bathing. Maggie, emerging into the sunlight. How'd you come? Thanks. <laughs> come on, Bert. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, one of three. Two more okay. to go. Okay. Let's do it go. Come on. Great. Thank you. West Yorkshire's dramatic landscape is popular walking territory and includes well-trodden routes across the Pennine and Calderdale Way. In the midst of its river valleys, there's a network of towns and villages whose existence historically depended on navigable trade routes. The market town of Hebden Bridge is defined by its landmark Stone Bridge, which has linked the banks of the River Calder since 1510. The town prospered in the late 1800s at the height of the textile industry, due to its riverside position, providing it with water power for the mills. Civic pride and traditions from the Industrial Age remain strong here. Living proof of this is the Hebden Bridge Brass Band, formed back in the 1850s by local mill workers. Earlier in the week, we sent keen musician Bert and Maggie to meet Ian Coleman, the band's longest serving member, to find out more about Yorkshire's brass band heritage. Well, how important is it uh, to have a band in the area? Well, it's, uh, it's traditional, really, in Yorkshire mm. to have a brass band in uh, local villages. Mm. If you go around, there's, there's lots, there's one over in Howarth, not too far away, there's one up the road, right. there's one down the road in Todman, and it's, it's very important mm. to have a village band and to keep it going. Yeah. And would that rise, give rise to competition? It does, yes. Well, uh, this band is a championship section band right. and there's uh, five divisions mm. starting on the fourth and building up into the championship. We were in the fourth division in 1997. Mm. So, as you can see, we've worked hard and we've got up to the top. The band's bright uniforms date back to the early 1990s when they were sponsored by the local clog factory which made clogs in their colours. These days, they are mostly funded through playing concerts in the area. And typically, this brass band is something of a family affair. But at the moment, we've got uh, three couples here who uh, are in the band. We've Les and Colleen, who are a married couple. Yeah. We've Ian there at the back and Tracy, who's another married couple. And Steve and I are a married couple, and both their sons have played with this band as well. Right. As Bert once played bugle with the boys' brigade, Ian has an instrument which should make him feel right at home. This is uh, a tenor horn. <laughs> you know what to do? Well, not really, because it's a bit different than a bugle. Well, you're still blowing the same yes, place. Well, I'll, 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 I'll try my best. <laughs> <laughs> Having blown his own trumpet, so to speak, it's time for the band to give them a tune. And it's something special for our house buying trainee rocker. Have you ever heard of the Kaiser Chiefs? Oh, yeah. indeed, well, just yes. take us backward steps and just listen to this. Right. Sounds good. <laughs> really looking forward to this then. Uh, three, four. <laughs> to my ears. But time to change the tune back to properties as we continue our search. Travelling four miles southwest of Halifax, we reach the village of Barkisland, set on a hilltop in the borough of Calderdale. Once home to a 19th century woolen mill, the community has its own cricket club, which plays in the Huddersfield League, and a couple of pubs for lunch. Within walking distance of the village shop and post office is our second house, a Grade 2 listed barn conversion. This is 
the property that I want you to consider. Come on in. Mm. It's lovely. Wow. Well. There's something about it. I don't know what it is. As you can see, this huge door, mm. the stone surrounds and reveals of this door, mm. came from a, an old um, convent in Wales. Yes. Right. This is so intriguing. This is, no, yes, it? it is. Come and follow me. <laughs> This house is packed with original features, which I think Bert and Maggie will just love. It also has the light and space they're craving. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's lovely. What do you think, Bert? Well, I said to you this morning, you're the merry go man. I think maybe this is <laughs> your own song today, that's all I can say. It's got a certain sort of baronial feel. The fitting an officer and a gentleman, I thought. <laughs> yes, well, I don't know about the gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> but is this the sort of room where you would feel at home? I would say. What about you? I would very much say. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, let's have a look at the kitchen. It's just mm -hmm. through here. Okay. There. Straight off of the baronial hall, oh. you've got this. Now, this is nice. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. Nice outlook from the sink. Yeah. We're better to be washing the dishes. I mean, I suppose <laughs> this one is probably feels very familiar to what you've already got, in a sense. Well, spacious wise, it yeah. is. Yes. Yeah. Well, this huge and social space is definitely going down well. And also on this floor, in what was originally the dining room, we find the bedroom that our buyers could be calling their own. Now. This is currently set up as the master bedroom. Right. All right. Doesn't have an ensuite, but it does have space, and it is on the ground floor. Or it mm. could be a dining room, yeah, or study, mm -hmm. or snug, if you were happy to go upstairs. Well, it definitely has mm. the space, uh, not the wardrobe space, maybe, for someone like Maggie. Right. But <laughs> it has the space... Uh, mm for to be our main bedroom. I mean, the dining room is rather given away by this enormous uh, chandelier yes. that's hanging over the bed at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I think you wouldn't really want that in your master bedroom. Uh, although maybe you would, I mean, <laughs> back in the day, Bert, you know. Yes, so. <laughs> Swinging from the lights. That was a long time ago. <laughs> well, they're certainly very happy. And while the two bedrooms upstairs are considerably smaller, they could be just right for the grandchildren when they come to stay. Now, this was the master bedroom. Gosh. And you can see now why they've done what they've done downstairs. Of course, yes. The other room up here is mirrored yeah. by this. They're about the same yeah. sort of size. You've got some storage behind these curtains here. Yeah. Uh, lots of light and air, which is nice. The other thing to point out is that the main family bathroom, or shower room, I should say, is also up here and it's next door between right. the bedrooms. Mm. And this is all the room we need for, if we retain the master downstairs, this is all the room we need for a guest room. Now we saw that lovely little paved courtyard on the way in. Yes. You've also got some grass. Right. And some sunshine. That's Let's nice go and have paved. a look at the other garden. As Maggie is after a nice spot to sunbathe in, I think the lawn of this property would suit her perfectly. And we've saved this till last because right. we thought we'd give you a little bit of grass <laughs> to play with. Sounds good. And in terms of right. maintenance, I think mm. this is probably enough, but yeah. Yes, absolutely. Mm. So, let's have a think about the, uh, the price Dear. of our second property. <laughs> right. Now, we made Maggie oh. go first last time, but so I think <laughs> it's your turn. Well, I'd love it to be under our, our uh, budget, mm. but I can't see it. I, I would go for £260,000. £260,000, yeah. I was going to say 260, but uh, which way do I go? Five above or below? You could agree. I could agree. <laughs> <laughs> that would that be a would first. Be difficult. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was waiting for it, yeah. <laughs> I'll go for 265. 265,000 mm. pounds. Well, you're both right to think that this right. would be over budget. It was on the market at 295,000 really? pounds, but it has just been reduced. Right. A process you know only too well. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the good news is that this mm. is now £250,000. Really? Just that's, on budget? That's fantastic. It on is. budget. But um, yes. now you know what it's on the market for mm. and what you might get it for, mm. go and have another look around 
I think we will do. Yeah. Go on. Yes. Well, thanks very much. Start Thank planning. You. Off you go, Thank man. You. Well done. <laughs> Lovely. So, on the market at their maximum budget of £250,000, this beautiful barn conversion offers them everything they're after. It has lots of light and space downstairs, a spacious kitchen and socialising area, three bedrooms, and a manageable garden for Maggie to sunbathe in. Well, my views on the second house really are hard to put into the words because I did not think it would be even uh, close uh, possible for us to find a house like this within our budget. It's truly amazing. Well, I have to say, house two is a hit. Coming up to the front door, it's a stunning front door. It just says, welcome and come in. Um, and that's how I felt when I came into the larger room. It really just is a lovely room. I think I belong in this chair. <laughs> now, just checking out the pond, if they do buy this place, I don't think they're going to have many fish, but I do suspect you are going to have quite a few frogs oh, well, looking frogs. at the spawn that's in there. That's fine. <laughs> now, I think this has been a success, hasn't it? Absolutely. Yes, yes. I would agree. Mm. It really... yeah. indeed. Good. So. There's a real yes. buzz about it, a real excitement Absolutely in your voice. there is. Excellent. Yes. Right then. All right. Well, if the long haired general is happy, I'm happy to. Have... There, says we're all happy. a serving man. Very good, sir. <laughs> After you, Major. Thank you. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Left, right. <laughs> and as the sun sets over the Yorkshire hills and dales, it marks the end of our first day of house hunting. Retired Army Major Bert and wife Maggie are making the move from Northern Ireland to be closer to their family in West Yorkshire. So far, they've been surprised by a terraced weaver's cottage and enraptured by a 17th century barn conversion. But coming up, the Mystery House delivers the goods once again. I was not expecting anything like this, Jules, I must admit. And I visit a family business with a right royal reputation. Well, it's the start of day two, and the burning question, of course, is what do Bert and Maggie think of the show so far? I don't think there's any getting away from the fact that property number one left them feeling a little bit shocked and disappointed as to what they could really afford. But in property number two, I think we saw a newfound sense of optimism, and I'm really keen to keep that theme going with our final property, the Mystery House. Now, as you would expect, it's unlike anything they're probably expecting to see, but in many ways, it's a modern take on an old classic. Just over seven miles outside Halifax is the parish of Wadsworth, set in the stunning landscape of the upper Calder Valley. Its amenities include a post office which acts as an off-license and shop, and a community centre for getting to know the locals, which is also the HQ of the bowling club. Our mystery house is close by in the charming village of Peckettwell which has a local pub dating back to the 17th century, serving food and real ale. It's also home to the Grade 2 listed Peckettwell Mill Complex, a working weaving mill from 1858 until the 1980s. On the site where the workshops and weaving sheds once stood is our mystery house, set amongst a new development. The building we're concerned with is the one over there with the doors open, right. leading out onto the little patio Ooh. at the back. Yes. Okay. So you've got views from there yes. over all of this. Yeah. The other thing I should tell you is that it is brand new. The builder left a week ago. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> so there's nothing to do. You might want to change the colours, but it's all white. Oh, no, it's good. It's all easy. White is bright. White is bright. Yeah. So happy to have a look? Yes, please. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Mystery House beckons. Right. Let's go down the track Great. and into the mill. Good, thank you. While not prepossessing from the outside, once Bert and Maggie get through the front door, they'll find this property a real stunner, with a particularly bright and spacious living area which is attached to the kitchen diner. Mm. There we are, Maggie. Come on in. I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> what was it? I don't want to do this. <laughs> it's nice. Is it nice? Uh, oh, it's ridiculous. Maggie. 
<laughs> Sorry. It's all got a little bit emotional. I know, because it's so bright. Bert, take over. I'll try, <laughs> I'll try. It's, uh, all I, I said to you that mm. you're the miracle man, you obviously are, James, because you've just produced this woman in tears Business. for me as well. To, 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 uh, and it's taken my breath away as well, too. I'm not usually short for words, but you've stumped me here. It's so modern and bright, you know, light everywhere. And that's what I wanted, so... It doesn't get much lighter or brighter. It's perfect. Nothing to do. Absolutely nothing to do. Yes. Yeah, the kitchen. Come have a look at this. There you go. Oh, Absolutely brand yes, new. Yes, perfect. Straight out yeah. the wrapper. And everything is built in. Yeah. It's really good. That really is what's for words, aren't you? I was not expecting anything like this, Jules, I must admit. Well, you can't get better than that, can you? Let's see if we can keep them enthusing as we head into the main bedroom. Come on in. This is your master. Absolutely. OK. On and the ground floor. Yes. Built in. And you're on suite. Go have a look. That's really, really just all we need, isn't it? Well, there's plenty of room for me to swing around in there, all right? <laughs> More information than we probably need, Bert, to be fair. It's excellent. Really lovely, I have to say. Upstairs, there are two more bedrooms, which could be perfect for the extended family or visiting friends. One bedroom in there, very similar size, in some respects, to the master. Family bathroom with bath. And then this would be bedroom um, three. Just perfect, isn't it? Look at the light from the ceiling there as well. Yeah, really two huge yes. skylights there. Yeah. And again, built in. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's everything, you know. Oh, <laughs> Don't make me do it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, maybe we're getting there then. We are, definitely. I'm pleased to say their reaction just gets better and better. And I think Maggie will love the outside space. It's a real sun trap for her bathing and has amazing views. So what about it? Is this big enough for you? It's big enough, certainly. Not a lot of looking after. I'm feeling that perhaps yesterday morning I was demanding a miracle from you. Uh, <laughs> as one does. But when I see the delight on my wife's face, you, you've, you've uh, well, you've just lived up to all my expectations. Well, I hope we can satisfy all these fantastic expectations, but there is, of course, one more bit to consider, and that is the price of this one. Well, the price, so in a way, gives me a sinking feeling because uh, with what we've seen already, uh, this must exceed our budget. I would say 270. Yeah. And with Maggie on this one as well, you know, as I say, it's well over our budget and, mm -hmm. and over the 270,000 that she's quoting. Well, the good news is that you're both wrong. This is on the market, much reduced, to 249995. Yes, mate, I'm just telling them. I'm just telling them that, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so just on, just on budget. Go and explore your new house. <laughs> Off you go. Thank, Thank you very you. much indeed. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, we often do get an emotional response to our houses. Very often, of course, it is the mystery house that does it. This one was no exception, but even I was unprepared for Maggie's reaction to this one. I think it's a real winner. It satisfies all of their needs. I love it. So it looks like top marks for this bright and modern mystery house, which is on the market for the merest fraction under their £250,000 budget. It offers a big sociable living space, three bedrooms and a private walled patio garden with fabulous views of the surrounding countryside. But well, when I saw it from the outside, when Jules uh, pointed it out from across the fields, uh, I didn't really think it was f for us. It, it, it didn't really fire my, my rockets. Uh, but how wrong can you be? Well, I was just taken, a, uh, taken by surprise, totally. Uh, the favourite space in this house has to be the main room. It's big, it's bright, there's lots of light, high ceiling. But it really just is everything that I would want in a house. Come on. Out. Oh. <laughs> I want to stay. I know you do. I know you do. But, as oh. Bert said earlier, mm. um, you've seen some fantastic properties, all of which need your full consideration, I think. Mm. 
You have given us an awful lot to think about, Jules, without a doubt. Right, let's go and think. OK. Historically, West Yorkshire has been an industrial heartland. And while the mines may have come and gone, the mainstay of trade around these parts has been the textile mills. The wool would be brought down from the hills, dales and moors and woven into the fabric that clothes an empire. In the town of Pudsey, wool milling 21st century style is a thriving commercial enterprise. And earlier in the week, I met with Tom Hainsworth, seventh generation weaver and managing director of the family textile business, which has been flourishing here for almost 230 years. How did it all start? It wasn't like this, presumably. In 1783, uh, my great, 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 great grandfather had a horse and cart and used to collect the, the fabric from the local cottage weavers and take it to Leeds Market for sale. And eventually he saved up enough money, he used to keep a pot on the side of his mantelpiece in order to build his first factory uh, in 1800. But what did the company make its name in? It was really military textiles. So since the Battle of Waterloo, we've We've clothed the British Army. So you clothed Wellington's Army? We clothed Wellington's Army. That's, that is that's quite great. a claim to fame, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we're very, very proud of our history. Practices have certainly changed over the years, but the process is still relatively similar to what it was back in the 17th century. The raw wool is teased out and spun into usable thread. It's then threaded to create the warp before being woven. From here, it's dyed and finished, ready to be cut up and be tailored into soldiers' uniforms. Here we've got the, uh, the Scots Guards and the Irish Guards. Yeah. Um, and this is the Guardsman's uniform. So what the MOD are looking for is a, is a fabric that looks the same year on year on year on year. And I guess you ship this all over the world? Yes. In, in most countries where they have a royal family will have their ceremonial uniforms made from our cloth, whether they be Malaysian, whether they be Swedish, whether they be Danish whether they be Dutch. And what about our own royal family? Yes, well, when William, in his recent marriage to, to Kate Middleton, he was wearing uh, our cloth, yeah. the, the scarlet uniform that he, you saw with him and the page boys, yeah. it was all made from, from our... And presumably Prince Harry's as well, his, his Prince Harry's uniform. Yeah. That's right, and uh, Prince Charles, um, and the Duke of Edinburgh, they were all wearing our cloth. It is a terrific testament to the company and the attention to detail in this product that it's still going so strong. Wool in Britain is still big business. Last year, 30 million kilos were produced. And Yorkshire is still at the heart of this industry, as it's home to three quarters of all British wool mills. But this traditional wool manufacturer isn't resting on its royal laurels. They've created an unexpected new woolen product. So, you talk <laughs> about diversification. It, it, it's what I think it is, isn't it? It is what you think it is. It's it a is coffin. Absolutely. That's extraordinary. Amazing. As you can feel, it's very tactile. It's nice to touch. It, it creates a, it's sustainable, renewable. Eco-friendly. Eco-friendly. Yeah. Um, it supports British farmers. This is all 100% British wool. Well, Tom, my congratulations on a pretty breathtaking bit of innovation. So there you go, an inspiring tale of a family business with strong military connections. Does that sound familiar, I wonder? Let's go and see how Bert and Maggie are getting on. Well, here we are, at the end. Did you ever think we'd reach this point, Maggie? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, um, let's just think about the three properties that mm. we've been able to show you. So, number one, tucked away, yes. um, uh, mid-terrace, next to the pub. Well, in between two pubs, wasn't it? Yeah, so it was. With a lovely double Victorian bay front. Yes. I was really surprised by the height of the ceilings. Yeah. I was not expecting that at all, mm. Jules. Uh, uh, the kitchen also was... Of, of a very good size, yeah. which we were not expecting, I don't think. Were you expecting no, that No, not at thing? all. I didn't expect that. It certainly helps us gauge uh, what you're interested in in terms of sort of character. But we didn't want you to be outdone, so we took you to our second property, which, although 
Uh, a semi-detached it was one with a difference, that lovely old converted mm. barn. Really like the approach to that. The front door was stunning. And then walking in, there was such a welcoming feel. And, and a bit of a wow bird. Yes. Oh, there was a wow mm. factor there. There was. Yes. It was awesome, really. To, so we uh, finished our first day on a real high. We mm. did. Um, mm. And then we took off this morning to our final property, of course, the Mystery House. Yes. Now, that got more of a reaction than I was expecting, <laughs> oh, Maggie. It did. Um, having seen two properties that were more traditional and then to walk into something that almost was on all of my wish list, high ceiling, uh, lots of light and space. Well, you saw for, for both our reactions. I, mean, I was lost for words for myself because it just seemed to be exactly uh, what we were looking for. And still is. Mm -hmm. Now, that brings me on to my final oh. question, of course. Um, what happens next? Have we, have we stolen your hearts and your wallet with any one of our properties? Well, my heart is stolen. There's no doubt about that. The mystery house. The mystery, the mystery house. The mystery house has yes. done it once again. And, <laughs> but how would you feel about that, moving into our mystery? The house of mystery. I could. I could. Short and sweet, you could. Yes. <laughs> but Maggie, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, as anybody watching this will, I'm sure, have gathered, it's been a real giggle as well. It's been good. Um, and I'm really, really pleased, genuinely very happy that we've been able to, um, I hope, help you relocate to be near your family. Well, thank you well, very thank, much. Thank you very and much. And it's been indeed, great for yeah. us as well. Thank you. Thank you. You know, some people come on Escape to the Country because they want to downsize, but for Bert and Maggie, well, they've had to because of their own unique financial and personal circumstances. But as you might expect, for an army family that have moved, what, 26 times throughout Bert's career, they've tackled the challenge with true military determination. And thanks to that, and with a bit of luck, hopefully they can now look forward to a new life near to their family here in Yorkshire. Bert hoped that we wield a little bit of magic. But I'd like to think we've certainly managed that. Bert and Maggie made a second visit to the Mystery House, and the good news is that they're keen to make an offer as soon as they've secured a buyer for their property in Northern Ireland. If you'd like to escape to the country in Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland or England and would like our help, then please apply online at bbc.co.uk forward slash beyond. Today I'm in a county that's home to a stretch of moorland that gave rise to a famous local song where dogs play football and sheep fly backwards. Where are we? Well, join me in just a few moments and I'll tell you. On today's show, I'll be helping a couple from Northern Ireland find their forever home over the water in England. And early on, we hit a real high note at one of our properties. I said to you this morning, you're the merry go man. I think maybe this is <laughs> your own song today, that's all I can say. Then the mystery house reduces them to tears. <laughs> what was it? I wanted to do this. <laughs> Well, today I'm in West Yorkshire, and this is Ilkley Moor, a place famous, of course, for the song on Ilkley Moor Bar Tat, a tune now synonymous with the West Yorkshire dialect. But there's a lot more to it than just a jovial tale warning of the dangers of coming up here courting without a hat on. In these parts, it's a serious matter. One local MP proposed a motion in the House of Commons trying to keep the song alive. Now, whether you know the words or not, it is just one part of the area's rich heritage and culture that makes this part of Yorkshire well worth a visit. Now, on paper, house hunting here in West Yorkshire does make for some pretty interesting reading. Your average detached will set you back around about £206,000. And to put that in context, that's the same price as you would have paid back in 2004. But don't be fooled. The amount of urban sprawl around here tends to cheat house prices down a bit, get out into the countryside, and they can rise around Ilkley by as much as 20%. But as you might expect, in a county with such historic pedigree, there are some wonderful architectural styles and examples on offer. There's a choice of affordable period properties here, thanks to an array of former workers' cottages. You'll find cosy two-bed terraces in most villages in the county, with prices starting at around £100,000. If your budget can stretch to at least £450,000, you could purchase a Georgian detached house in traditional local stone. 
many of these properties have been internally updated, creating a modern home with a wealth of character. And if you really want to lord it up, then keep your eyes open for one of the rare ex-mill owners' mansions. Prices can start at around £800,000 and spiral upwards from there. So as you can see, some wonderful architectural examples on offer to suit every taste and every budget. Let's just hope we can find something to fit today's buyers. Meet 60-somethings Bert and Maggie from Bangor, Northern Ireland, who've been married for almost 46 years. I would describe Maggie as bright, articulate and lovely. And I would describe Bert as uh, good fun, steady and... <laughs> now retired from the Irish Guards, Bert's distinguished military career saw him reaching the rank of Major and being awarded an MBE. But now he and Maggie are planning to escape from their modern two-bedroom house to England in order to be closer to their four children and six grandchildren, the majority of whom live in Yorkshire. What we're most excited about regard in regards uh, moving is obviously to be with the children and the grandchildren. But also, um, I would say I feel energised by change. And so the fact that this is going to be changing to a new place, a new environment, uh, that is exciting. However, the move has been delayed by illness, with Bert being diagnosed with cancer several years ago. When I was first diagnosed, I was very lucky because this was picked up very early. Well, now is the perfect time to move because I'm in between uh, transplants. They will give me a stem cell transplant and then uh, down the line I will have another uh, stem cell transplant. My cancer cannot be cured but it can be treated.